and with all the people that I've discovered mm -hmm. in my life, mm -hmm. and I obviously have discovered the biggest acts in the, right. his, in the history of the world, mm -hmm. the seven or eight years from 1987 to March 3rd of 1995 that I spent with mm. Easy e mm. were certainly the most important mm. right. period of my life. Mm -hmm. And I've always felt that uh, that actually NWA and Public Enemy definitely mm -hmm. took the place of where Bobby Kennedy and Martin mm -hmm. Luther King mm -hmm. would have gone if they right. wouldn't have been assassinated. Right. They did more for race relations in this country definitely. than anybody except Dr. King and Bobby right. Kennedy. And, and that's something that I want to touch on um, with regards to the rap <coughs> as it was back then and such political activism. Uh, how do you compare it against today's rap? And what do you think that they can learn from uh, the rappers uh, back in the late uh, 70s and early 80s, uh, sort of like the forefathers of uh, hip-hop and rappers? It is now, uh, you know, there, there seems to be a lot of political activism lost in today's rap and hip-hop. Um, do you see that? What are your thoughts on that? Well, you're asking the wrong person, because to me, there's only three mm -hmm. rap groups ever. Uh-huh. Public Enemy, politically, mm -hmm. NWA, so right. sociologically, right. Right. and if there wasn't an NWA above the law, probably mm -hmm. would have been the most important of the mm -hmm. West Coast groups. Wow. Mm -hmm. And anybody else, even though they make money and they're good, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, they're not rappers, they're in, in, into hip-hop. And they're really pop. Mm -hmm. Rap is yeah, not that's so true. Pop. That's so true. <laughs> Rap is not pop. Exactly. So That's so true. It's impossible mm -hmm, for me mm -hmm. to relate to guys that, first of all, they no longer tell stories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What they do, they're in a singles business. Mm -hmm. There's no, it takes a nation of millions. Right. You know, there's no straight out of Compton. No. There's no Ethel for Zag and mm -hmm. there's no. Um, Hundred miles and running. Yeah. See, they don't tell stories mm. anymore. Right. Mm. And even to go back, Carol King's tapestry. I mean, there were records told stories. Yes. They yes. no longer tell stories. They were just hit records. Mm -hmm. And when I say just hit records, mm -hmm. I'm sure that uh, Little Wayne makes a lot of money, and I'm sure mm -hmm. a lot of guys make a lot. Of, certainly, Eminem make a lot of money. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and. It's obvious that Andre Romel Young makes a lot of money. Right. Mm -hmm. And probably, outside of easy as a conceptualizer, mm -hmm. certainly the most important factor Dre. of mm -hmm. the entire rap era mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is Dr. Dre. Look what uh -huh. NWA did. Mm -hmm. The city of Compton wasn't on the, the map of the wow. city of Los Angeles. They put their city on the map. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, how many people could say that? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, the things that they did were were incredible, mm. and That's right. I mean, they're the ones that really should be proud of of, of what they've done. Definitely. And um, I just think it's it's in incredible. So it sounds like you're you're very, even though there's a little bad blood, you're very proud. Of mm. all the members of the There's NWA. no bad blood on yeah. my part. <laughs> right, right. You know, not bad. Right, no, right. Yeah. Jerry, exactly. Jerry doesn't have any animosity. I, I've been through this before. Historically, right. in the music business, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It that's the way the mu music business mm -hmm. was started by the mob. <laughs> and they stole money from right. guys like Little Richard yeah. right. and Bo Diddley right. and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all those guys, Howling Wolf and Muddy Waters, mm -hmm, wound mm -hmm. up. Destitute because the mob wow. took all their money. Yes. Mm. When Easy and I got started, Easy said, "Hey man, I want to be like Barry Gordy. Wow. We're not <laughs> going to do that." And you know, a lot of people talk shit about Barry Gordy, mm. but here's what I tell my class about Mr. Gordy, and mm -hmm. I, I see him, and I still call him Mr. Gordy. Mr. Gordy. <laughs> Mr. Gordy. You know? uh -huh. So, who's the biggest female group of all time? 
Supremes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what, Loved what, what, what label were they on? Motown! Motown. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, who's the biggest, not the obvious one, but who's the biggest child star of all time on his own? Child, Michael, Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. No, no, that's obvious. Stevie, yes. Stevie Wonder. Stevie well, Wonder. What label was he on? Motown. Motown. <laughs> <laughs> like Stevie Wonder. Motown. Who was the biggest group of all time? Oh, oh. Eagles. Jackson Five. Jackson oh, Jackson Five. Five. Okay, yes, there you go. The group. Yeah. Well, Not heavy. What label were they on? Motown. Uh, Motown. Yes. Who was the biggest black male singer? Marvin Gaye, what label was he on? Oh, wow. Wow, isn't that, isn't that a, just a wow. coincidence? <laughs> Look, and then you say, and then you say, Mr. Barry Gordy. <laughs> Mr. Barry Gordy. Temptations. Yes. Oh, yes. Tops. Yes. I mean, this guy. Yes. I mean, he's deserved the right for me to call him Mr. Gordy. Yes. Definitely he is. Yeah. And he and I weren't friends because I represented Marvin. Right. And oh, I wow. told Marvin wow. in the beginning, I mm-hmm. said, Marvin. This guy's going to come to you with mm. a brown paper bag full of money and try and buy your publishing. Right. Wow. Mm-hmm. Either you can mm-hmm. be your own man or you can be his man. Right. And Marvin never took his money. Wow. And wow. that's why he and Marvin were never good friends. Wow. Wow. And that's why Mr. Gordy and I were never friends. I understand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I represent right. the mm-hmm. little guy. Wow. I don't represent the big guy. But wow. Mr. Gordy, for me has to be one of the mm-hmm. probably half dozen most important human beings in the in the history of music yeah. of the business. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I mean Definitely. he's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I mean the big Marvin Gaye was a concert pianist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was the drummer in Harvey and the Moon wow. Blows. Mm-hmm. He wrote the biggest song in Motown's history mm-hmm. uh, up to that point. Dancing in the streets. Wow. Mar- yes. Martha was a reception. When you walked into the front door, <laughs> she was Martha she was, was a reception. Was a reception. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. wow. That, is, yeah. that is like awesome. So cool. And Marvin wow. wrote that. His brother in law was Harvey Fuqua from mm-hmm. Harvey Fuqua. Mm-hmm. Wow. They were married mm-hmm. to Barry's sisters, Anna and Gwen. Wow. And, uh, mm. you know, I. I I love Jan Gay so much. We're, we've been so close. I've known wow. her since she was 16 when mm-hmm. Marvin wow. met her. Wow. We've, been, we've been friends all these years. And I'll tell you who else I met then, who was 14 years old, who playing guitar for Stevie Wonder, was Ray Parker Jr. Oh, yeah, oh, yes. Ray Parker Jr. Ray yes, Jr. yes. Yeah. He was actually um, at the recent LA Web Fest, which is the biggest Web Fest in the world. Ray Parker Jr. is actually a good friend of the guy who founded LA Web Fest, who's a really good friend of mine, Ma- uh, Mike Ajakwe. And um, uh, Mike actually was the director of the unsung Ray Parker Jr. Mm, episode, so which was which was wonderful. Ray Parker mm-hmm, Jr. Mm-hmm. wrote the biggest movie song in history. Yes, he did. And to this day, yes. since '64 or whatever. He's made a million dollars a year wow. from Ghostbusters. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right. We got a call. Ghostbusters. 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 <laughs> I just always remember the deep of something strange. <laughs> <laughs>